Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at concave and convex regions, so we can answer questions from exercise 9i. So, in this region we're going to be using the second derivative to help uh, identify whether a uh, equation or a function has a concave or a convex uh, region in it. Just a reminder, convex and concave in science looks a little bit like this. So convex sort of spreads out from the centre and concave spreads inwards to the centre uh, as if by a cave. So uh, in, in, in maths, curves can be described as concave, convex, and in some cases you get regions on the graph where you've got part of it being a concave region and the other part of it being a convex region. So, let's look at the mathematical definition. A convex function, a function where the line segment joining two points is above the function. So, let's draw a diagram and see what that looks like. So, the line segment joining two points of the function um, is above the function. So, in this case, it looks like a U shape. So, for a convex shape, think U. <clears throat> and for a concave uh, function, uh, a function where the line segment joining the points is below the function, a bit like this one is here, the line segment is below the function, <coughs> then um, then think concave. Or in other words, if it's like a upside down U shape, like an N type shape, um, then that's uh, it's going to be a concave shape. So convex with an X goes to U, so that's a U shape, and concave with a V goes to an N type shape, so upside down. It'd be nice if the V went to the U, but unfortunately it doesn't work like that. And in this in this function here, we have a line segment above, so that's obviously convex, and this section here we have the line segment going below, so that's obviously concave. You can see here how it would effectively form a cave, that's uh, kind of like a cave shape here, if we were to draw your um, if we were to draw the line segment here, it would definitely look like a cave. So that's another way of thinking about it as well. Okay, so how do we now identify this? Um, we have a convex region here and a concave region here, but how do we work it out mathematically? Um, for a convex function, the gradient is increasing. At this point here, at the start of our function, we've got a negative gradient. Negative, 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 negative zero, positive, 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 and the value of the positivity gets bigger, and the value of the negativity gets, well, the value of it gets bigger as well until it reaches zero. So in this case here, we're knowing, we're going to identify that the rate of change of the gradient is positive. So in this case here, d squared y by dx squared is greater than zero. So for, um, for a convex function, you've just got to prove this. The second derivative is positive. And for a concave region, it's fairly similar. You can see that the gradient here is getting smaller, 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 smaller. Therefore, the rate of change of the gradient is negative. So therefore, the second derivative is below zero for a, whoops, not convex, a concave function. Okay, so there we are. Right, so, uh, convex, line segment above the line, second derivative positive, concave, uh, line segment below the line, uh, concave is second derivative less than zero. So, find the interval on which the function x cubed plus 4x plus 3 is concave. So, first thing we'll have to do is differentiate it once, and differentiate it twice. So we've got 6x, we're looking for when this thing here, we want concavity, so we're looking for when it's less than 0, so this one here. So we're looking for when 6x is less than or equal to 0, so therefore x must be less than or equal to 0, and that's the region in which the graph is concave. Okay, uh, next Question. Oh, we can see how this uh, works then. So for any value x less than 0 is going to be this region of the graph here. Uh, we can see here how the gradient is getting smaller, 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 smaller. In other words, if you were to connect uh, a line segment, it's going to be underneath the graph, below the curve. So that's why it's concave. 
Okay, next function then, something slightly more difficult here. Show that the function e to the 2x plus x squared is concave for all real values of x. So in this case, it's probably going to be something to do with the fact that the e to the x graph is always positive. But let's see. Take the function, and the first thing you'll have to do is differentiate it once and differentiate it again to get, um, to get the second derivative. Now we're going to look for when this function here is convex, in which case we want it to be greater than or equal to zero. So what we're going to have to do now is start our explanation from some known facts to conclude that this thing here is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. We know that e to the 2x is always greater than zero for any real function, but just by the definition of the graph. If we multiply this by 4, we also know that that is greater than, greater than 0. And if we add 2, it's definitely going to be greater than 0 for any real value of x. So therefore, it's always going to be convex. OK, so there we are. And this is what it looks like. It's always going to have, now from no matter what line segment you draw, your line segment is always going to be above the graph. OK, the point at which the curve changes from being concave to convex is known as the point of inflection. So in that case here, it's the exact point at which the, two, the, at which the um, line segment is perfectly um, in the same direction as the, or the same, has the same gradient as the function at that point. So in that case there we saw one just there. So in this case here, the point of inflection is probably going to be appearing at around this point here. Uh, at the point of inflection, the curve changes from concave to convex. Therefore, the sign of the second differential must change, or in other words, it's equal to zero. So, show that c is concave in the interval between minus 2 to 0. Now, I just need to clarify what this notation here means. Where it's square brackets and in the interval from minus 2 to 0, that's effectively saying minus 2 to x to 0. And if it's convex in between 1 to 3. OK. Part B is find the coordinate of the point of inflection. So a good a good standard question this. So to show that it's convex, we're going to have to first of all differentiate once, differentiate it twice, and then substitute in the numbers um, minus two and zero. It's a linear relationship, so that if it's still uh, negative or positive uh, between these two values, it's not going to have changed in between. So now we consider the given interval. When it's x equals minus two, we get minus sixteen. When x equals zero we get minus 4. And since the function is a linear relationship, the second derivative is always going to be less than 0 for all values in between minus 2 to 0. If we were to plug in any number in between minus 2 to 0, we're going to get a number in between minus 16 to minus 4, so it's always going to be negative. And we'll do the same thing for in between 1 and 3. So substituting in the value of x equals 1, we get 2. Substituting in the value of x equals 3, we get 14. Given that the relationship is linear, what I mean by a linear relationship is that in between 1 and 3, it's just going to track the gradient from 2 to 14. It's not going to dip below the 0 marker and come back up to 14. It's just going to be linear straight from 2 to 14. So therefore, if it's in between 2 and 14, it's always going to be positive. That's why we have to add in this little addition of it is linear. Uh, so therefore, the second derivative is always positive, so therefore the shape is always convex between the region of minus of 1 to 3. And remember, 1 to 3 is effectively an inequality between 1 and 3. Right, part B then. To find the coordinate of the point of inflection, set the second derivative equal to zero. Since this is the point where the sign of the second differential changes, it makes sense that this is the point itself and must be given a value of zero. It changes from a negative value to a positive value, so in that case, um, that's when the point is equal to zero, or when the second differential is equal to zero. So, take your second derivative, 
set it equal to zero. That's how you find the point of inflection. Uh, rearrange your equation and you get two thirds. So for the coordinate x equals two thirds, it changes from being a convex type shape, it's a concave type shape, to being a convex type shape. And because we want to work out the full coordinate, we need to plug in the x value into the original y coordinate. So our coordinate here is going to be 2 thirds and 47 27ths. Okay, you should verify that d, um, the second derivative changes sign across the points we have found. Um, so choose values of x either side of 2 thirds and substitute them in. So substituting something slightly less than 2 thirds, 0.6 would be a good one, so negative. Substituting 0.7, something slightly bigger than 2 thirds, and that's positive. Great, so it has turned from negative to positive. And this is what the function here looks like. For the cubic graph, actually, this is going to be the point of... Um, the point of rotation of symmetry by 180 degrees. If you were to rotate this graph around this point of inflection, it would end up back where it is. So it's quite an interesting fact about cubics. Right then, so your turn to have a go at these two questions here then. Your questions are, uh, give the regions in which the curve is concave and convex for part A, only working in between 0 to 2 pi for the first one, and the same question, but we're working for any real value in the second part. Pause the video and try these two questions out. Right, okay then, let's go for this function here then. So, what we're going to need is the second derivative. So, first derivative, cos second derivative minus sine and we're looking for when this function here is uh, either greater than zero or less than zero when sine x that's minus sine x is less than zero we can say that uh, sine x the function itself has to be positive so therefore the region in which this is going to happen in is in between zero to pi. And then when minus sine x is positive, um, the sine function is going to be negative. So therefore, when the sine graph is negative, it's going to be in between pi to 2 pi. And in this case here, for the first one, uh, let's just have a look, it's concave in this part here and this one here is convex okay great so the next one so this applies to this and this applies to this okay um, for the following function give the regions of the curve for which the shape is concave or convex so in this case here we're going to have um, first derivative e to the x minus 2x and the second derivative is e to the x minus 2. So for the first thing we're going to look at is when e to the x minus 2 is negative to see when it's concave. So in this case here e to the x needs to be less than 2 so therefore x has to be less than than 2. So in this case here, this is when the shape is concave. And alternately, when e to the x minus 2 is positive, e to the x is greater than 2, so x is greater than ln 2, and this is the region in which the answer is convex. OK, so there we are. Those are the answers to these two questions here. Then make sure you have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 9i. Um, and it's a pretty simple uh, task. This just differentiate it twice, see where it's positive or negative. Thanks very much for watching.